Sekiro is tough. Even for Souls fans, especially for Souls fans actually, your muscle memory works against you in this game. But instead of leaving an embarrassing review on Metacritic, stick with it because honestly, the combat could become your favourite of any From Software game like it has for me. This video contains tips for those that are struggling and also fascinating little details that I guarantee even the most seasoned player has missed. First, did you know Sekiro actually comes with difficulty settings? Finally, right? After you defeat the Chained Ogre, make a right at the Samurai General and jump onto this branch past the small hut. Look for a grabbable ledge, move into the cave with Headless in it, and escape out the back to Senpo Temple. Ringing this bell curses you with increased difficulty, but it blesses you with increased item drops. Enemies actually don't become much harder. But bosses do, so remove it before you fight a boss. Yeah, my first tip for new players is make the game harder. But um, hear me out, because now that you have the Bell Demon active for better crafting material drops, we can talk about grinding. It's honestly something that I recommend every player does at least once, because not only does it give you gold, experience, extra healing items, and crafting materials, you'll hone your combat skills in a predictable environment, which means that you'll actually see yourself become more efficient at taking out all of these enemies. The best early game location for grinding is undoubtedly, I think, the first stretch of the Harata Estates, where enemies give 34 experience, 23 gold, pellets, and also rare crafting materials like scrap iron and even black gunpowder. Now, there are two items you absolutely should use up while grinding, green and gold Mibu balloons. Before you start killing enemies, pop the green Mibu balloon, which increases item drop rate. However, don't pick any of it up yet. When you've finished killing your entire run's worth of enemies, then pop the gold Mibu Balloon, which increases gold acquisition and it actually applies retroactively to all of the gold that you've left on the ground, which means you can run back through the area, listen to the sweet sweet sound of gold clinking, and then start a new run, killing a few more enemies for gold before that balloon buff disappears. It's very efficient. This whole process should give you at least four experience points to spend, and there are three skills I consider to be baseline for anybody. First, there's Mikiri in the Shinobi Art Tree. There are tons of enemies that have devastating perilous thrust attacks, and by dashing towards them, Mikiri gives you what is actually a very, very forgiving option to completely nullify their damage, and you also deal a bit of posture damage as well. After this, you can invest in Suppress Presence, which drastically improves your stealth. Next, in the prosthetic art tree, Chasing Slice, a skill that's really, really good with the shuriken arm, and honestly, the shuriken is probably the best prosthetic for general combat. It's cheap, it allows you to interrupt enemies, it allows you to finish off weak enemies, and you can chain together combos and enemies really, really well. Use this. If you have a ton of gold and you're at a loss as to what to invest it in, you should always have options. Uh, the best option is gold pouches. These are consumable bags of your own money that prevent it being lost upon death. They cost about 10% of the gold that you spend on them, but you will always get value from these considering you're gonna lose 50% of that gold if you die, so buy them whenever you see them, seriously. If you have nothing else to invest in, you can buy spirit emblems which actually only cost 10 gold at the start of the game. When you do die, you spread Dragon Rot, which reduces your chance of receiving Unseen Aid. A lot of people ask me what type of death spreads Dragon Rot, so here's the answer, only true death spreads Dragon Rot. If you die and resurrect, that death does not spread Dragon Rot. If you ever feel that you might die because you're out of Gourd or something, just peace out instead. Every player now has a Homeward Idol, which unlike in previous games can be used to teleport you back to a checkpoint for free. This way you won't lose half your experience, you can invest your gold, and those around you won't get dragon cancer. If your quick select bar ever starts to feel cluttered, remember, holding down left or right on the d-pad will immediately skip you to the first item on your bar, which should always be your healing gourd. Honestly, I'd recommend you only ever keep gourd and pellets on your bar. The rest are items that you can just use situationally in the pause menu. And pellets are really good, you get a ton of them throughout the game. 
Of course, you may not like where your buttons are for heal, and I can't blame you, the controls are a bit strange. However, everyone can now rebind buttons at will, and most players, I think, will prefer having triangle or Y as heal, and up on the D-pad to switch prosthetic weapons instead. This lets you move around with the left thumbstick and heal at the same time. Speaking of button presses, have you ever wondered what happens if you don't take the second R1 death blow offered on main bosses? This happens. If you ever died an embarrassing amount to a boss looking at you, Lady Butterfly, now you can show them what it's like to die over and over again. One button that I guarantee most of you haven't pressed is triangle or Y when you're in the travel screen. This opens up an antique map which is this beautiful little piece of art that expands as you explore more areas. But in order to explore that map, you're going to have to be good at combat. And to follow, here are 10 powerful, underappreciated mechanics that exist in combat. These are things that struggling players need to know and that even experienced players might be overlooking. First, consider resetting stealth if you get spotted. Hop a few fences, stay out of line of sight for a little while, and sometimes, with enemies like the Chained Ogre for example, they'll actually turn their back on you as they return to their standing point, which puts them in a position where a stealth kill is possible, where usually they weren't even possible before. This strategy works pretty well against mini-bosses like the Shinobi Hunter or Juzo, uh, bosses that have a ton of smaller enemies that you're going to want to stealth kill one at a time before engaging them. Now, while stealth can get pretty cheesy, combat is anything but. These first few days have been full of Souls fans realizing that they can't get away with Dodge R1 anymore. I do want to confirm though, yes, iframes do exist. They exist on jumps and they exist on dodges. But enemies now have far, far better tracking. Because you're supposed to be deflecting these attacks. In a way, most attacks are supposed to track you and hit you. So don't dodge through them. This is a game about clashing swords, and the only time you should be spacing enemies is when they do perilous attacks, or if you're facing multiple enemies. Standing face to face with an enemy is no longer a dangerous position to be in. And a mountain of positive effects are baked into blocking. Let me show you them. What you're seeing here is attack cancelling enabling a block as long as the actual swing isn't in motion. This is why it's important not to spam R1 attacks like you can in Souls games. This will cue your attacks, you'll do more than you intend to, and it'll make it harder to block cancel. Instead, consciously tap R1 once every time you attack, so that you're always fully in control this way. Your enemy will eventually power through your assault, and you will be ready to start blocking at a moment's notice. Few new players understand just how powerful a tool blocking is. It prevents all damage, it can be used to inflict posture damage, it comes out at a moment's notice, and you can also recover posture twice as fast while blocking. Look at this. So if you don't need to move out of the way of anything and you're just waiting, block should be your standard position. And a super OP technique that few people are utilizing is repeatedly tapping block as fast as you can while being attacked. It repeats so fast that it's actually impossible to get hit through it. And it also gives you a decent chance at deflecting a blow. Don't do this all the time, obviously, you still have to think, but if you're ever feeling overwhelmed by a flurry of attacks, you can just spam tap block and try to keep up with them. At best, you deflect some attacks. At worst, your posture gets overwhelmed, and bear in mind, most enemies can't even necessarily capitalize on breaking your posture, so you might not even take damage if you roll fast enough. Another reason spam tapping is important is because of another mechanic called consecutive deflect, which increases the posture damage you do for deflecting multiple hits in a row. Many enemies have flurry attacks, uh, these are attacks that are a huge opportunity for you. You want to see flurry attacks. Sing the pacing in your head. For example, this enemy is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. And now I'm actually happy to see this attack coming my way. Sekido is, in no small way, a rhythm game. If you do take an unblocked hit, you'll actually notice your character falling off balance. This stumble can be resolved by blocking or dodging, and as you can probably guess, blocking is better. 
your recovery is actually immediate if you turn it into a deflect. Enemies can get perfect deflects as well, and while they don't reduce your posture, they do affect the flow of your attacks, giving you a brief pause and putting you back to the first attack in your sequence. Enemies can use this pause to launch a combo of their own, so if you notice them starting their own combo, just let it happen. Go on the defensive. Combat is now about trading offense and defense, and defense is just as big an opportunity as offense is. Another opportunity you're probably not making use of is your jump kick. So basically any enemy can be double jumped on, enabling a tiny bit of damage with double R1, but something that most players overlook is that you actually deal a ton of posture damage if you jump kick a perilous sweep attack. Look at this. So next time you intuitively jump away from an enemy, jump on them instead. Finally, posture is linked to your health. When a posture bar is glowing red, it means health is low and posture will regenerate slowly. To kill most of the later bosses in the game, you actually have to be very aware of opportunities that allow you to deal health damage, because posture damage at the beginning of the fight is going to be worthless. One such example of this is against Lady Butterfly, who suffers greatly against repeated dodge attacks and shuriken throws when she's jumping between wires. If you're appreciative of any of these tips, or maybe you're running low on t-shirts or hoodies, then consider checking out the merch section down below the video. A lot of you guys mentioned last time that you wanted a light version of the last design we made, and my artist and I have obliged. Demon Vatividia now looks good on dark t-shirts and hoodies, with a sort of Miami sunset behind him rather than the eclipse. I priced it as cheap as I could make it. All of the weapons should look familiar to you if you're a Souls fan, so hopefully that you feel like you're sort of repping the things that you're passionate about, you know? That's what I would want to wear in a shirt. So that's what I made. I'll see you in the next one, or on Twitch as we continue my blind playthrough of Sekido. Link below, follow the stream. If you're wondering what I think of the game, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but if it continues at this pace, on this track, I think it's going to be my favorite From Software game to date. The only thing I'm worried about is replayability, and I really want to know what you guys think of the game down below. Do you think it's too hard, too easy? Let me know, and I'll see you next time.